Hello, we are here at Kew Gardens to share a little bit more about our collaboration with Kew Gardens and Ahmad T with our Beyond the Leaf range. The Beyond the Leaf range has been a huge success selling in over 34 countries around the world. And not only does it provide an exquisite quality tea, but also it is contributing to vast research here at the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew. To tell us more about the vital work that is being done at Kew Gardens is Professor Alexandra Antonelli, who is a Director of Science at Kew. Your book, The Hidden Universe, is an absolutely fascinating read. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is very simple. It's the variety of life on this planet. And it goes all the way from genes, the smallest units of biodiversity, through species, their roles or functions in ecosystems, uh, the evolutionary history, and then ecosystems themselves. So it's a combination of those five different uh, aspects or components of biodiversity. All life depends on plants, fungi, and, and animals. And here at Kew, we see biodiversity as one of the key assets we have in the fight against climate change. We now have about 440 scientists working all together uh, to, to find some solutions to those big challenges. We are working more than 100 different countries. We have the world's largest collections of plants and fungi. And we're working in partnership around the world and around the clock, really, to, to try and um, progress on that work. That's amazing. And what, what role do you see the tea plant playing in this? Tea is such a fantastic example of how humans have interacted with biodiversity for millennia. It is one of those plants that have very strong associations to uh, our culture. So people have been using tea for, for a very long time. Um, and it's also an example of how we can sustainably use nature. So we don't only have to look at biodiversity as something that needs to be protected. We need to use it. We need to utilize it for our well-being, our health, uh, and do that in a sustainable way. So tea is a very good example of that. And, and that is actually key to our collaboration. It's not, not only do we share the fact that we're both British companies and we have a huge fan base around the world, but also at the heart of what we do is nature. And you know, for us, it's the tea plant. What ways could we kind of further that and actually kind of understand our relationship with nature a bit more? I think it's really fascinating to consider how people have utilised this variety of plants around the world. Because uh, on the one hand, we have... Uh, about 350,000 species of plants uh, and we've utilized about 7,000 of those as edible uh, source of food. But um, over time we have also decreased the number of plants we utilize and nowadays we are dependent on very few plants. And I think tea provides a good example of a plant that has been at the core of many societies throughout millennia. Biodiversity is not only how many species there are but also the genetic uh, diversity within species. So I think that by understanding more about the complexities and the difference that exist within a species, we're also better able to identify um, you know, places where tea plantations could be better adapted to climate change, for instance, in the future, and that can sustain livelihoods uh, in developing countries. At the core of how we blend at Ahmad tea is actually taking some of these tea plants from different sources and high quality blends and, and blending them together so that we are actually supporting kind of a diverse range of tea. I really think that this is a fantastic example of how a, a commercially minded um, project which of course relies on traditional indigenous knowledge about the different varieties and how this can be brought together to create the best quality products for, for customers is directly contributing to the important research and conservation work we're doing here at Kew. So what we're trying to do is to really identify what are the regions and the species that are most likely to be under threat so that we can put in actions to preserve biodiversity. So for instance, we are working uh, in many countries to identify tropical important plant areas, which are the, the hotspots of diversity, uh, so that those areas can be preserved under national legislation and that can then help contribute to safeguarding the future of species uh, in situ where, where, they, where they grow. We're also working uh, together with um, collaborators on the genetics and uh, the adaptations that exist within species so that we better understand how different varieties, for instance in tea but other plants as well, may be, may be able to cope with climate change because the world looks quite different today and uh, moving ahead we have to understand what's the likely impact of climate change on the livelihoods of those farmers for instance growing those plants. Yes. 
I mean, in the tea industry, we are seeing the effects of climate change on, on yields. So, for example, in Assam, we're having reoccurring flooding, um, which is having devastating effects, obviously, on, on the farmlands. In Kenya, the rainfall hasn't increased. However, it is really concentrated on several days and causing soil erosion, landslides, which, as you know, will have a devastating effect on plants. And then in China, where the majority of green tea is sourced from, they've had huge droughts. I mean, last summer there was hardly any water, which was leading to just the death of many tea bushes. Are you seeing the effects of climate change in your research? Yes, very much so. And unfortunately, we know that climate change is here already, so it's not something that's happening in the future. So we know, for instance, that some of those changes are irre- irreversible. We know that some, some regions are getting much drier, for instance, or much hotter as well. Um, and that, of course, will have a very tangible impact on the cultivation of crops. So I think we absolutely need to understand both how we can mitigate the impacts of climate change. So, for instance, you know, a, a general reduction in carbon emissions. But we also have to understand what are the best ways of adapting to climate change. And that's where I think the expertise from both traditional and local knowledge about how to grow those crops and how to handle uh, the effects of droughts, for instance, and flooding, but also using the latest technologies that we are, we are applying here at Q, where the use of artificial intelligence, for instance, and, and, and genomics can really help us um, select for those genes and those traits that are going to be most successful in the future. And for our customers at home and you know the people watching it um, who would like to make changes in their lives but don't really know how to go about it, um, do you have any tips for them or um, any advice for them? Uh, yeah, sure. I think the, the nice thing about biodiversity is that we all can make a difference and every single action really means something and we can see the results quite quickly as well. So compared to climate change where you may take decades sometimes to see a positive uh, you know, trend shift or, 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 or impact, we can see uh, the effects of, for instance, increasing biodiversity in your own garden if you have one, uh, almost immediately. So I think that there's a lot we can do in terms of our uh, personal choices. The, the things we can do in a garden or in a, in, a, in a balcony are very noticeable. So I think, for instance, growing plants that will benefit pollinators uh, and other insects is something that we all can do. You may consider building a dam, for instance, for uh, water organisms. Um, you can leave a pile of, um, of wood for fungi and for, for insects and other small mammals. Uh, the, the products we consume has a huge impact on the environment, not only locally but also globally because of the supply chains. So I think choosing quality uh, rather than quantity is a very important step. For instance, reducing the, the consumption of meat, which has the biggest impact on land use around the world. Um, choosing products which are um, organic or environmentally sustainable uh, is also very important. I think we can all uh, look at how our pension funds and other savings are being used uh, so that they all you know, um, contribute to, to this vision of protecting nature. And there's so much more, so that's why I list in my book actually. I have two chapters about things we all can do because I do believe strongly that there is a huge potential but we all have to participate in that, in, in, in that work. This is really a moment for people who enjoy Ahmed tea to understand who is Kew Garden and what amazing work you're doing around the world. I uh, really thank you. Well, I must thank you because I think that the, the leadership that you are showing as a company is something that we are very keen on because um, it is really important to understand the, the role that different parts of society play in safeguarding biodiversity. And I think that industries, uh, including yourself, uh, who are really committed to a sustainable uh, use of natural resources can really lead the way in terms of a new generation of um, you know, natural exploitation which benefit uh, the local livelihoods but also uh, you know, increase quality and access to very really high quality products. So I think we're very, very keen to d- develop this collaboration and I think explore uh, you know, in other areas uh, further collaborations with industry because we think and we strongly believe that uh, those collaborations are going to be very influential in the way that um, societies operate And of course, uh, this is also a way of um, supporting the important research that we are doing here at Q. Well, this has been an absolutely fascinating discussion. Thank you. And thanks so much for the partnership. We're very proud and uh, very supportive of this. Thank you.